Hello, Afford a Plane Builders. This is Terry Adair in Houston, Texas with the Afford a Plane Build. And I currently pulled out the second wing. This is our left wing, uh, the better of the two, uh, being that it is my second wing. I should have gotten a little better at it. But anyway, right now what I'm doing is I'm applying some masking tape uh, right here on my ribs. I'm leaving about a one inch gap. Uh, this is so I can come on back with some more polytac thinned out with reducer and let it wick through this fabric and glue these spars down or glue these wing ribs to the fabric. I uh, was concerned that if I were to glue them before I stretch a fabric that I might have gotten some pull left or right when the fabric shrank. So the good thing about this stuff it is porous and when you thin that glue out it wicks right through the fabric straight to the uh, wing. I got the second wing over here I can show you what I did on that. I did the exact same thing and you can see right here where that glue joint is and that is underneath the poly brush and you can, you can clearly see where those ribs have been glued to the fabric all the way down the wing and same process just taped them off top and bottom so that I have good adhesion to the top of the ribs and the bottom of the ribs to the fabric and then I went ahead and put the poly brush on top of that um, this wing has two coats of poly brush I applied it with a uh, two inch brush basically it kind of spreads out to a four inch brush as you're kind of applying the material and um, by the time I got to my second coat uh, I actually had some rain that started to come down on me. So I've been really fighting the rain here uh, in Houston. It's been raining off and on. We start out with a nice clear blue day and, and then we get a little bit of a thunderstorm going. But uh, it was real nice to see the water beat up on this like a freshly waxed automobile. And that tells me that I have a very good coat of poly brush on there to protect this. So, uh, I do have a quick question for you guys. Uh, got the wheels and brakes from Black Max Tire or Black Max, and uh, I've been having an issue keeping air in this one here. Um, not sure what it is. I've checked the valve stem. I've pulled it out, cleaned it, put it back in, uh, pulled the bead, reset it. But this this right hand tire of mine keeps deflating. Takes it about a week to fully deflate. But I'm just curious if anybody else has had any issues uh, with their tire sealing those black max wheels and brakes if you have just drop me a little comment have had no problems with this side it holds air no problem at all um, anyway haven't done a whole lot with the fuselage let's see have we done anything new nope we haven't done anything new so all right I'm gonna let you guys go I'm going to get my tape and I'm gonna finish taping this wing up and then I will mix up some uh, polytac 50-50 with the xylene reducer and I will start applying the glue to the top ribs and uh, then I'll flip it over and we'll do the bottom side all right we're out for now talk to you later Okay, builders, it's Terry with the Afforda Plane. I'm back again. I finished taping up these uh, ribs here, and basically, I just want to give myself straight lines. Um, remember, as I mentioned earlier, I did not glue these down when I did the uh, fabric, I just glued to the edges. So uh, now I'm going to go ahead and place the uh, uh, glue right here I've got it mixed up here with 50% uh, 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 polytac and 50% uh, polytac reducer and uh, just got enough here in a little one inch brush uh, my polytac is normally clear it's got a little bit of a red tint to it right now uh, just because I was using this brush the other day to kind of do some um, of the poly brush which is tinted red but I got it cleaned out got a little bit of a red tint to my glue but it'll be all right so I'm gonna use this little one inch brush here 
and I'm going to start applying the Polytech to my rib. And I'm not, I'm not too sure just how much of this is actually going to show up on the camera. But I wanted to just go ahead and film it. And if it shows up, great. Uh, if not, well, I'll just explain what I'm doing. <clears throat> the uh, ribs here underneath are actually getting coated with the glue as I do this because the glue is soaking through the fabric and allowing the fabric to be adhered directly to the ribs. And it's a little bit of a, a monotonous, repetitive action. That one there is good. This one might be a little bit out of frame, but I'm going to go ahead and hit this one as well. And I just dip the brush in there, get it get a little soggy. And I run it up and down the rib. Now initially, you see that it just starts soaking in. And as it sits there for a moment, it penetrates the uh, poly fabric and soaks right on through to the metal underneath. And if I get a spot that seems like it's a little bit reluctant, I just kind of press down a little harder with the brush and it pushes it right through the weave of the fabric. I'll hit as far as I can do on one side and then I'll go to the other side of the wing and I will hit them on that side all the way around the leading edge. They said that first little pass I run down it just starts soaking through the fabric. Now this is mixed with a 50% reducer so the glue is pretty thin and by applying some pressure to the brush you can push that glue right through the fabric and what this will do is allow the skin the underside of the skin to actually stick to the aluminum ribs on the other side you want to be careful not to do too many passes over it because the stuff does dry fairly quickly and as it dries uh, you'll know because it'll start to tack up on you and uh, as it tacks up of course it wants to get real hard to brush through and that's a good indication that uh, you put on enough it's time to move on Now once it's dry all the way, if you feel so inclined, you can come back and hit one more pass. But I don't think it's really necessary to put more than two coats on it. One is probably more than enough. Because once this dries, the second coat may not even penetrate. But the whole idea here is uh, we just want to wet this fabric out and that way we have a positive lesion to the ribs. And it doesn't take too long. It takes more time to set the tape up than anything else. Now sometimes you might run into a situation like this. This rib it is a little bit loose from uh, the fabric. So I got a solution for that.
it is. Okay, so I'll just take a couple of weights, a little three pound weight there, and that'll hold the fabric down for me. And now, as I come back and I put that on there, we'll be making positive contact with the rib. And I'll let that one sit a little bit. <clears throat> it's getting a little tacky, so I'm gonna move on to the next one. starting to soak up in there real nice. Oh yeah. I don't actually know if we're going to get to putting the poly brush on it tonight. I was hoping to be able to do so, but between some of my errands that I had to run today, time just kind of got a little bit away from me. And let's see, here, is that dry enough? Yeah, that's dry enough. Okay. Let's go ahead and take one more. Let's see. I need just a couple more weights over here. It doesn't matter what they are. A couple batteries. And, uh, there we go. That one wasn't too bad, but I kind of like that idea. Putting a little weight on it just to make sure we're holding fabric down. I hope you guys can hear me okay. I'm probably about 10 foot away from the camera now. He said I'm not a real, what you call a real professional YouTuber here. So I don't have a lot of fancy microphones. I don't have any microphones for that matter, fancy or otherwise.
right now we're on the front. any weight up here on the front of the wing because these things wrap around the airfoil and uh, I have a pretty extreme airfoil on this I can't wait to uh, see what the resulting lift factors are when I say I have an extreme airfoil you know I explained in some of my other video how I did uh, kind of a combination of the aluminum airfoil and the foam airfoil. And let me say, what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean is I tried to use a thicker airfoil. And a thicker airfoil um, gives you more lift and slow speed. And so by, by increasing the thickness of this airfoil, I mean, it, it does increase drag. Fortunately, we have plenty of power on this plane. Uh, we're not looking to go super fast with it. But I do like the idea, if you've ever experienced an RC airplane that has an exaggerated airfoil thickness with a high power plant or a, a high horsepower power plant uh, short takeoff and landings are very easy and not that this airplane suffers from problem with taking off in a short distance, but I thought it would be neat just to experiment with that. And uh, apply some of that aviation RC knowledge and experience to the afford plan. After all, what's the worst that could happen? We don't like it. It goes too slow. we got to build a new set of wings. I don't know. I certified it as uh, Terry Dares Airfoil. If you want to see an example, I'll try to get some better pictures of this in the daytime. I know some of the photographs I've taken have been at night. Uh, a lot of times, this hour right here is when I start really getting busy, if it hasn't been raining. And we've gotten lucky today, no rain. But my work generally carries on well into the wee hours of the morning. Just, you know, it's cooler. Um, don't have the heat bearing down on you so much. And not only that, it's, it's probably better for these glues and uh, also these sealers, you know. Daytime here can get very hot. Even underneath this canopy, it can be 100, 105 degrees and Early back in July, we had 
we had some temperatures that were 110. Now right here the tape is is off the wing a little bit and uh, I had a discovered that I had a little bit of a, a hanger rash that I wanted to take care of so I peeled the tape up and I put a, a small patch on it and I just had this out so it could kind of dry now I'm going to go ahead and run my polytac across this patch I had that polytac on it already just to hold it down and it was just a small little thing probably about the size of a fingernail <clears throat> maybe not even that big okay all right, last one here, in front of the wingtip. Once I finish this up, I'll take the camera down and I'll walk you around the wing. You can see exactly what we've done. This may be a before and after would have been good. Well, I kind of did it before. I showed you guys what it looked like earlier. Alright, that should be that should be sufficient. Alright, let me go set this down. Okay guys, you're gonna experience a little jiggle, a little shake as I unclip the camera. 18 minutes, as the camera says. That's how long that took. Okay. All right, now if you look at the seam, you can see that aluminum right through the wing. And that's where the Polytech is penetrated through the fabric see that you can pretty much see the aluminum rib so down here same thing now some of these ribs um, they got a little bit discolored I don't know if that was from sitting out before I used them but you know we wiped them down with some scotch bright uh, pads and uh, that discoloration didn't seem to come off I didn't worry about it a whole lot after all everything's going to be painted in the end so you can clearly see the rib through here, which means we have good contact with the fabric in the rib and that glue will let that sit up and dry. Now back here, you'll notice is a, it's a different color and this is where I have applied my anti-chafing tape and it, it basically goes around the back of the wing because we do have some uh, rivets along the side here and there's a little bit of an edge so we put two layers of anti-chafing tape and so right here this is tape and we did saturate that to try to get some glue in there uh, I'm not sure how well that'll stick but I think we have enough contact area here that we're gonna be alright so I'm gonna let this sit up and then we will pull the tape and we'll go to the other side and do the same thing. And then once that's done, uh, we'll go ahead and clean up all the fabric, make sure we don't have any fingerprints or oil, dirt, dust. And we'll get started with the uh, poly brush, uh, just like we did on that wing in there. All right, thank you guys for watching.
Okay, Florida Plane Builders, Terry back here, and uh, we're going to go ahead and uh, start gluing these uh, ribs on the bottom side. This time, I have a little bit uh, neater setup. I've gone inside and picked up a couple of dumbbells and have a bunch of three pound weights that I can uh, shift back and forth just to make sure we have positive contact between the ribs. So I'm going to run over to the garage, mix up a little poly tack real quick, and uh, grab the paintbrush, and we'll get started. This nice little thousand watt halogen light likes to attract all the bugs. I hope they stay out of my glue. Now we'll move on down to uh, this end. I just went ahead and got that wingtip rib because I can get the whole thing front to back without having to walk all the way around the wing. Yeah, I'll stretch that out as far as I can get. Going down the wing ribs. Actually takes longer to lay the tape out than it does to put the glue on. On the other wing I was using the high dollar expensive blue tape. Five dollars a roll. Took me two rolls. 
and as I mentioned earlier, we did take a whole bunch of material back to Home Depot. Stuff that's just been lying around the garage, not using it, left over from handyman jobs here and there. And sometimes I just collect it all up, take it in, get me a store credit. And if I don't use it to buy a new tool, I use it to buy stuff like paint thinner or tape. Or I'll just save that card until I get another handyman job and I'll buy materials with it. And of course, that's when I convert it back over to dollars because the, the money that my customers would give me to buy their material, I just pay for the material with my credit. And recoup my... Uh, my losses. Alright, that's good on that one. I think I like this staggering technique here. Moving these weights around. Allows me to get maximum coverage. And all these weights are doing, they're just, uh, they're just holding the fabric against the ribs to make sure we have positive contact while this glue sets up. Doesn't take too long. Generally, by the time I finish putting it on and get to the other side, fairly well dry, but I'll go inside, watch a sitcom or something for 30 minutes, come back outside, check on it. That's usually more than enough time. Now this this uh, rib gluing here is in lieu of uh, something like rivets or rib stitching. Uh, this airplane is not a fast airplane. Definitely below 100 mile an hour. So um, according to the instructions. The instructions for the glue, not the instructions for the airplane. The, uh, the glue joint is sufficient for a sub 100 mile an hour airplane.
right, we'll move over to this side. Get the wing tip. more reach than I thought it was from the other side. Hey. I'm only having to go by about two feet from here to the end. Your sandwich is done. Yeah, and I'm putting on blue and I'm videotaping. So welcome to YouTube, sweetie. I'm editing out. Uh, I don't edit. After about six months or so of uh, doing this, when people come outside and see me talking to myself, they know I'm filming. They don't want to be on camera though. It's a labor of love. And usually the only person who loves the airplane is the one doing the labor. Occasionally, I can get my son out here to help me move things around. It's funny about these kids, though. My daughter, just a few years ago, there are pictures of her. I couldn't get rid of her. She was in the garage, into everything. Daddy, can I help? Daddy, can I help? I guess that was four years ago when we got started on this. Almost four years. Gosh, has it been that long? Well, she was only about seven, I guess seven or eight back then. It was so cute to have her out here. Although there wasn't a lot she could do, but I tried to keep her busy so that she could have some fun. Now she's a teenager and she's in junior high school. She doesn't want to have anything to do with daddy's airplane. Try to get her to come out now and then just get a whole bunch of excuses. That's okay. One day they grow up and they're going to need, to need somebody to teach them how to work on their car. And then they'll come back. very cute watching her as a little girl. She used to go out to the airfield with me, fly airplanes, chase uh, quadcopters around. Not big ones, you know, just a little little Horizon Hobby Blade helicopters. She used to think those were so neat. Now she could care less. Alright. So, I think that's going to conclude this side of the wing. Because uh, we already did this whole one here.